Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to worship this morning. I am Pastor Jenna. Um, and on behalf of St. Andrews, welcome to our guests and visitors this morning. We're so happy to have you with us. Um, if you would like to stay in touch with St. Andrew and to be on our, our mailing list and communications list, there are blue uh, like bookmarks in the seat back in front of you. I invite you to fill those out and put them in the offering plate uh, when, the, when they're passed around later in the service. And we'd love to get you added to our communications. Um, there is a delicious hot breakfast that is ready for you after worship. If you purchased your breakfast tickets, uh, go on down afterwards. They are ready for you. And if you didn't, uh, you are still welcome to go down, purchase tickets, and uh, partake of the delicious feat that our confirmation youth have been preparing for you this morning. Um, and so everything, all the funds raised go to benefit our youth ministry and to support just the wonderful, wonderful kids that are uh, that come to church here. I am out of town this following um, Thursday through Sunday. Um, so Pastor Ken, Gibbon, Ken Gibbons will be here next Sunday to bring you the good news. And Pastor Matthew at Grace Lutheran will be on call for pastoral emergencies. Um, also, the office is closed tomorrow, but Anita and I are both available by man, uh, email and by uh, phone. So if you need to get a hold of us, please do not hesitate to do so. But that, dear friends, let us turn our hearts and minds to worship with our call to worship. Israel from slavery into freedom. 
at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, as your children, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. <clears throat> to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we remain standing as we sing our opening hymn, the number 365, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. <clears throat>
bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. Remember how he told you? beginning at the 34th verse. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. <coughs> we will read Psalm 118 responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The 
right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you for your and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord is his it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember, he is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloth by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. 
Do they hurry back, their steps lightened by the knowledge that the body wasn't there and that this was good news? Were their eyes filled with new tears, tears of joy rather than tears of grief? We don't know. All we know is that they went back and found the eleven and all the others with them and told them all this whatever all this refers to. Given the shock of the morning, I'm not surprised that whatever it is the women are telling the disciples doesn't make sense. You just picture them talking over one another as they try to share the details of their morning, the laughing and crying and awe of the miracle that has occurred, barely making any sense at all. And the majority of the larger group dismisses them as sharing idle tales. The original Greek word is a lot stronger than that, though. It's more like garbage. The good news these women bring to Jesus' followers is treated as garbage and nothing more. Only Peter dared to believe that it could be true. Peter, who had told Jesus that the Messiah couldn't die and was called Satan in response. Peter, who drew the sword at Jesus' garden arrest. Peter, who had denied Christ three times. Peter, who wasn't at the cross when Jesus died. Bold, whatever he thinks of first, Peter runs to the tomb. He races to the tomb. You'd think that after denying Jesus that Peter would be the last one to run to the tomb and, and hiding in shame instead. In this moment, Peter reminds us that even when we have our biggest failures, or what feels like our biggest failure, that we can always run towards hope. That we can always keep going towards the future God has promised us and that Christ has made it possible. Peter shows us that we can always begin again. Could it really be true? Do we dare to hope? Are we fools, gullible, thoughtless fools, if we dare to believe that the resurrection is true? That Jesus Christ defeated death and rose again from the grave. We cannot logic or rationalize our way to belief in God or the resurrection. We cannot prove it in any of the ways the world expects us to prove things. Easter asks us to risk looking like fools to the world because we believe the women's testimony of what they saw that morning. To risk being called gullible because we believe that what others call garbage and idle tales is in fact the very good news, news that our life depends upon. Early on the first day of the week, God shows us how wonder and belief in the resurrection can not only change us, but can change the world. Because it wasn't just one more day like all the rest. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to please turn to hymn number 361 and to please rise as you are able.
confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand.
to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Disposable cups. 
and there are baskets at the end of the front rows for you to place those cups in.
and shed for you. Amen. I invite you to please rise. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. As we go now from this time of worship, God goes with us and before us, remembering that the tomb is empty. For Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. We sing our sending hymn this morning, number 385, Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Rejoice and be glad. Thank you, God. 